everybody. It has been forever since I've done a live on here and I have to say I apologize. Uh, our winter has been crazy. The kids have been off school so much. Last week our temperature was minus 57 or something here in Iowa. It was crazy. And I swear the kids have been at home more than they've been at school. So I've just been, it's just been hard to get some videos done. So I thought I'd come on today and share a video because yesterday they were home again because of ice. Today there was a two hour delay because of the cold, but they went to school. They went to school. And I wanted to let you know that it's super easy for me to go just share stories on Instagram. And I've figured out the way to push them to Facebook. So I hope you guys are seeing some of those too. But with the organization challenge that we've been pushing, I'm getting a lot of questions and I thought that I would come on today um, to share some of the ways that I organize in our home and where our home doesn't look like it's full of plastic bins and everybody thinks you have to go out and spend a ton of money on bins and totes and things to get organized and I, I never do. I Recently, I bought some new uh, drawer dividers for our kitchen. Uh, just we needed them bad and I got found some wood ones and so... Um, that was the last thing I really bought because I, I like to use stuff that we have on hand and I just thought I'd share some of these things. I've got like a pile of how we organize here. So I thought I'd share some easy ways to get organized. So the first thing, like obviously whenever I'm at a yard sale or a thrift store, hello Gail, hello Jan. Okay, you guys. Now tell me, Jan, will you tell me? Okay. Jan, is that better? Let me know if that's better. Okay. <laughs> I need to figure this out. I have to figure this out. I don't know why it doesn't work for me, but okay, thank you. Okay. So anyway, whenever I am at yard sales or thrift stores, I always pick up these old baskets. I will always pick up old baskets. They are perfect. This is a smaller one. They are perfect for so many things. I store greeting cards in this one and we I just put it in a cabinet in my office. But obviously you can store so many things in baskets. I use them in our living room for throw pillows and blankets. Um, okay, thanks Pam. Um, I use them everywhere because I don't want our house to look like it's a plastic organized mess, right? I'm decorating all the time and I want the organization to be part of the pretty home decor, if that makes sense. It, it doesn't have to look like a plastic bin and you don't have to spend a ton of money. Hello, Gail. One of my favorite ways to organize things like wax paper, um, plastic wrap and that parchment paper is in a uh, magazine holder. These are super easy to just put underneath your sink and they're easy to grab and you're not having to fumble through them all to find the ones you want. So I have a few of these underneath our kitchen sink because it, it's just, it's amazing. Okay, let me. Another thing when I am organizing, for me, I have to, I am a, thanks Gail, it's such an easy, and you can usually find them at thrift stores. I mean, this one was a wood one, but you can usually find them at thrift stores and stuff, or yard sales. For me, organization, I am a visual person. So if I don't see it, if it's hidden away in a box or kind of like a basket that I would put up above in a shelf, if I don't see it, I'm not going to know it's there and I'm not going to use it. So jars are my favorite way to organize, especially for smaller things. Um, and these candy jars, I mean, you can get them at Walmart and Target, but I always find them at my thrift stores. Uh, this is for, I don't sew. I don't sew. I'm not going to sit here and say, I know how to sew. No, I have a sewing machine in the closet down here that I still have never opened. I think it's been three years. So I do know how to put a button on a pair of pants though. So that's, that's something, right? I got something going for me. So I just use this little jar for my, just for the, <laughs> looks like I know what I'm talking about, for the thread and the needles, right? That's as far as my sewing supplies go. But a jar, it's just easy to reach in and I can see what I have and what I don't have. These jars are amazing. And then they do look really cool sitting on your shelf, you know, if you have them lined up with a bunch of different things. 
Sorry, guys, that was super loud. I've shared these caddies a million times from Grove, and they're great for putting, like I have one with just cleaning supplies, so then I can just grab the handle, and I can walk around the house and get everything cleaned without having to stop and search for a cleaning supply. But they're also great for things like craft supplies. Uh, Gabrielle uses them in her little art table. They're perfect for that. And they don't look plastic. They look cute sitting on your shelf. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be, don't think that you have to go buy a bunch of totes and plastic stuff and label makers, which, but label makers are nice, but you don't, just get creative with what you already have. And when you're going through stuff and throwing things out and purging, you'll find different things that you can use in different areas. Gabrielle's <clears throat> art table. Have you guys seen these at Ikea? If you guys are lucky enough to have an Ikea near you, I love buying this kind of stuff at Ikea. Ours is like four hours away, so we don't get there that often. But this is a whole system they have. And then, so on her art table, there's different sizes of these and we hang them up on a, like a rod. But yes, Diane, it's the best way to organize. And then it doesn't look, it looks like you too, right? It looks, yes. <clears throat> so anyway, she's got all of her crayons, markers, paintbrushes and stuff in this right on the wall above her art table. So she knows markers go in here, you know, pencils go in here. So it's easy for a kid to see and for, for them to clean up and use when they're done doing whatever they're doing. The same thing in her art room table, we have these little jars. I'm pretty sure these are Ikea too. They're just like miniature versions of the big ones I just showed you. And it's I, all of them lined up. It's for little things. These are those Orbeez beads. Is that what they're called? I don't think that's what they're called, but they you put them in water and then they grow. But for like little buttons and things that she uses for crafts, these little guys are perfect. And again, especially for kids, you can see what's in the jar. Don't put things, like if you had this with art supplies up above high, they can't see what's in there, so they're not gonna use it. But if you can, now obviously I know you don't want glass jars with little toddlers and stuff, but when they get older um, and can use this stuff, it's, it's good, because the, then they can see what's in there. Mason jars. Again, yard sales, you can get these for 50 cents. I love the way they, they are Ikea. Okay, okay. Um, I love getting these in all sizes and I use these, you can use these for, we have them, cotton balls in them, cotton swabs in them, clothes pins, <clears throat> just a ton of stuff. Her art table is full of these for different things. I'm looking over here and I have a, like I have one here filled with just safety pins and I have a tall one here filled with staples. So again, I can see what's in there. I know how many I have. I'm not gonna go and buy more staples, obviously, because I can see how many I have. So glass jars are perfect for stuff like that. Okay, another weakness of mine, any old wood box. This thing's little, it's been around for days. Matt uses these in the garage for some of his tools or like the smaller ones he'll put screws and nails and um, now I'm gonna show you here. He will line packages of, oh, I don't know all the terms of all the stuff out there. But anyway, he'll line them up in a, in a box like this so they're lined all the way up. But here's just pens and pencils. You can use these, this on an art table um, for kids. Stack the markers, the the scissors and stuff on there and set it in the middle of an art table and then keep everything organized just in this wood box. Easy peasy. This was the latest jar I found at a thrift store. Oh my goodness, look at that green lid. So whenever I find glass jars like this, old glass jars, the cookie cutters are in here right now, which would be great for cookie cutters, but I pick them up because they're so, they look amazing and they fit the style of our home and yet they're functional. You can organize with them. You can put things in them and see what's inside. So there, you know what I should do? I should do a live video in a thrift store and just go through what's there and then show you guys what you can do to organize. Does that sound like a good idea? I don't know. Might be. This wood box comes with the paint brushes that I rave about. Um, that old jar, Joanne, I about died when I saw that on the shelf. I, it was amazing. <laughs> Um, this wood box 
comes, um, the zebra paintbrushes that I talk about all the time, they come in this, the set comes in this wood box. It's a perfectly good wood box and it's the perfect size for things like essential oils or you could leave paintbrushes in here too, but think outside of the box, no pun intended, and think of different ways that you can use this stuff to organize. And this, oh, this you cannot see through, but if you just wrote, you know, essential oils on it or something like essential oils that you know, you know, you're going to use all the time and you know where you keep them, then, then these kinds of things are, are useful. Okay, here's a good one. If you guys have little kids that, Melissa and Doug, I'm trying to think of like the wooden kitchen, like the ice cream set and the pizza set and the cake set, I think there is, they all come in these boxes right these little and they have compartments I don't want to dump this all out we keep this upstairs in our hutch in one of the drawers it fit perfectly in there when Gabrielle we had a kitchen set up in the little toy room and so we had all the kitchen stuff inside her refrigerator so we didn't need this box anymore but it fit pens and pencils and tape and all kinds of stuff perfect and we just needed a little of this stuff upstairs so when the kids are doing homework or we're writing out bills or something, something like this, just with a few supplies, was perfect. And it fit right in the drawer. And anything with little compartments makes me happy because everything will stay organized. So if you have kids that have the Melissa and Doug stuff, and then I think, I think Gabrielle did this. She took washi tape around it to make it so it didn't say Melissa and Doug, I think. So... You could get creative with that too, but you wouldn't have to. A question I get all the time is, how do you keep your kids organized? And my, my biggest tip is to keep consistent with them and keep them on the, have them, having them pick up and put away and stuff every day. Not just every once in a while, but every day. And once they continuously do it, it becomes a habit and um, it gets better. Now, Gabrielle, so I wanted to just show you this. In our back room, we have all of her paints and stuff. Now, when we started out, we had all of these. They were all standing up, all pretty in here. Gabrielle's not going to do that. That's fine. But she does every time put them back in this bin. Then she carries it to the back room and puts it on the shelf where it belongs. So with kids, you're not going to get perfect. And that's okay. But, I mean, this I'll take any day. I'm not picking up paints off the art table or off the floor or whatever. She puts them where they go, and then they go back there. So, and again, it took a long time of continuously doing that to, to get them in a habit of that. Little bowls like this, old little bowls, again, I pick them up because they fit inside drawers. So like a desk drawer, you could have, you know, paper clips or staples or tacks. I'm trying to think of what else you put in there. Little things like that. These are great on top of your dresser for jewelry or just a drop zone on the entry table as you walk in, a drop zone for keys, change, that kind of stuff, and they still look pretty. It's not a plastic bin with a label maker. It's something that you enjoy or you picked up or found, and yet there's function with it too. So that's how you organize and not make your house look like a container store. We don't have a container store around us, but I need to check one out. But anyway, um, and then one of my favorite, sorry guys, I was shaking the table. Oh, I'll show you that. little hacks, and I've shared this on the blog, is this. This is an over the door um, shoe organizer. So we have this clear one hung in our hall closet and it holds all of our hats, mittens, scarves, gloves. Um, yeah, that's it, in it. And it, you can see exactly what's in it. Kids can put the gloves and mittens away in the same pocket and you don't lose anything during the winter. It's the most amazing thing. Gail, I'm sure I would probably, I would. I would spend the entire day in there. But anyway, so this is a great way. It's the best way I have found to keep all of our um, winter gear organized and yet easily accessible for, for kids and husbands, if you know what I mean. I also use one of those on our um, linen closet, the back of our linen closet in our bathroom for like soaps and extra shampoos or razors or all that kind of stuff. And you can see through it. You can see what you need to buy 
you can see what you don't need to buy and it's easily, you can grab it. I think getting organized, not I think, I know, getting organized saves you tons of money and time because you're not buying things you already have and you know what you need when you need it. And you're not searching for stuff all the time when you're organized. You're, you're, you're not wasting any time doing that. So I've just, this was an, I don't know why I brought this in. This is just a miniature size candy jar that Gabrielle keeps some of her other paints and stuff in. Pretty much everything on her art table, I would say, are in some kind of glass jar because it's a lot of little craft supplies and stuff. Okay. That is all I think I brought down here, but I just wanted to share something that I shared on Instagram and maybe you guys saw it too. Um, I'm getting a lot of message from people that feel kind of overwhelmed and and I've tried the challenge is 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 laid out so you won't get overwhelmed. So it's it walks you through a little step or a little area every single day and kind of gives you the steps and what to do in that area so it's not like you're doing everything in one day or even three days. So it's broken up into 31, yes. It's broken up into 31 days and each day is a different area. So it's not, I do organize in a pantry or in my cabinets in the kitchen. We don't have a pantry. We actually have a, it's a cabinet kind of where we keep. And then we have one of those roundabout corner cabinets. It, our house was built in the 60s. So that thing is like, I can't stand that thing. But um, so we don't really have a pantry, but inside that one cabinet, I do. I do use things like wire baskets. I have like a, a deep wire basket that is all our snacks. Um, I have like a, a container that's kind of made out of this same stuff where all the crackers go in. And so yeah, I do organize in there as well. Okay, did I? Okay. But one tip I just wanted to share and it's an easy step and something you could do this weekend. And it, just to start getting in the motion of getting organized. The next time you receive something in the mail that came in a box, and it can be like this was uh, boots came in this box for Gabrielle. Or it could be a big, huge, well, this isn't huge. It looks huge there. It could be a big, huge box. It could be a small box. I don't have a small one here, but um, even a small box. Take that box this weekend and go through a drawer or a closet or a cabinet and organize it. And try, challenge yourself to fill up the one box with stuff that you aren't using, loving, or needing anymore. And just, just start there. Just start there. Start in an area where it's maybe not the messiest or it's an area where you think like a junk drawer or um, like your t-shirt drawer or something. Something where it's not don't start in the attic and don't start out in the garage, you know, like a bigger area. Just start in a small area, fill the box, donate the box, get rid of the stuff so you're not, you know, not wanting to get back in there and pull stuff out. And then, and then the next time you get a box in the mail, something is shipped to you, do it again and do it again. And just start maybe with baby steps and then it won't be so overwhelming. I think that was all I was going to say today. I hope some of these tips help. Um, as always, send me your questions. I answer all of them. And I left the link to the free five-day challenge up above so you guys can join us there too. But uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all the things. Now I got to go put all this stuff away and stay organized, right? Have a great Friday, you guys. The weekend is here soon and I'll see you guys soon.